I'm going to talk about some of the landscapes that you can find in Shenandoah National Park. Um, this is by no means exclusive. There are, are certainly a lot more, but these are just uh, picked out of like a few categories and some of my favorite places that we have found in these categories. Um, I guess I should ask everybody, can everybody see and hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. All right then. <laughs> um, just a couple of pictures there on the front. I think most of them are included in here. Um, and if anybody has any questions or comments or anything, just feel free to jump in. I'm going to start with just a little bit of background about the park itself. Um, you guys are so lucky that um, there is the national park in our backyard. I miss it very, very much. I think it was probably my favorite place to be ever. Um, I do have three national parks in my backyard now, but I miss the deciduous forest so much. <laughs> I really miss flowers and mushrooms. Um, <laughs> um, so the Skyline Drive is basically the national park. There's lots of hiking trails too. It's 105 miles of the Blue Ridge Parkway. It goes from Shenandoah or from Front Royal to Waynesboro over Shenandoah Valley. Um, there are four entrances to the park. Um, there's four entrances. They separate kind of the districts of the park. I always go in the north entrance, no matter where I'm planning on going in the park. I always go in the north entrance because I just enjoy the drive to get there. And I haven't, it, to me, it's not any faster to get to the central district by going down the side roads. Um, but for this presentation, I'm just going to talk about the north and central districts. Um, we did not make it to the South District very often, and the North and Central are kind of the main ones. The South is not nearly as popular or nearly as visited. Um, the overlooks, oh, there are 75 overlooks in the park. Um, the ones in the North District, they were actually designed to have foreground interest and kind of natural framing elements. Um, the first picture there is one in the Hogback Overlook. Uh, at the mile 21 um, and you can see that tree there that kind of frames it. It's also a really good sunset spot. We found almost, it was close to when we were going to move, we figured out is you could actually get a good sunrise picture there too if you go all the way to the uh, south end of the overlook and then turn backwards. You could actually get a good sunrise spot too. Um, the overlooks in the central district, this is where the highest peaks and the biggest canyons are. So these overlooks kind of tend to focus on those vistas and peaks. Um, and the picture there is the Hazel Mountain Overlook, which is one of the popular ones there. And that's also a very good sunrise spot. And I'm just going to touch on just a little bit of history of the park because I'm a big nerd and I've studied a lot of the history of the park. Um, this book here that I put a picture of, The Undying Past of Shenandoah National Park by Darwin Lambert is incredible. It goes through a lot of history that I had no idea about. Um, so it became a national park in 1935 and it was to become a park basically because President Hoover liked to vacation here and he had a vacation house there and he was friends with the guy who runs the, who ran the Skyland Resort. So they kind of were like, all right, let's make it a national park and kicked everybody who lived there in the land out. Um, but the project then was actually completed by the Civilian Conservation Corps um, during the Great Depression. But aside from that, there is a ton of other history in the park from like Native American history and the early European settlers. Um, there were some Civil War hideouts, a lot of copper and iron mines, and then um, farmers and orchard uh, uh, and mountain folk. I'm sorry, did somebody say something? <laughs> um, so then there were lots of farmers and mountain folk and like I said, they were all when they decided to um, create the park. But because of all of this history, there is some really cool old hidden stuff. Uh, a lot of rundown cabins and orchards and all kinds of like old mines. And if you 
go out there and you look around you can find artifacts and all kinds of stuff and lots of hidden treasures it's really cool Okay, but now on to the meat of our presentation here is the photographic landscapes. And I've focused on ones that don't involve strenuous mountain hikes. A lot of these are actually coming from overlooks or the side of the road. Um, the three pictures that I have here, there was all the same day, all the same spot. Um, I can't remember exactly where it was. It was somewhere between the milepost 40 and 45. And it was like right after the storm, you could see the fog kind of going through and then the sunbeams started coming through. So we were just like, oh, there's the, there's the light, pull over. Um, so you find a spot to pull over and just started getting pictures. <coughs> right um, I don't remember the settings on all of these here, but I just remember this was actually my first time that I'd done HDR brackets. Um, so I had to show them because it was my first time that I had done that. Um, but so there's just those examples there. But our categories that I'm going to go over today are sunrise, sunset, night skies, weather watching, kind of like the photographs here on the screen now, uh, short hikes, and what we call affectionately a plectrum alley. And I will let you in on why when we get to that part. <laughs> the sunrise. Beautiful. This is one of the best spots and it's just a really good spot to um, see the whole park. If you notice on the two, no, not these, I'll show you on the next slide that there's two pictures, but on the top picture here, that ridge on the right side that kind of goes curves in leftwards and back right, that is Skyline Drive. This view actually faces southward. Um, it's kind of like southeast, I guess, but it's actually, a view of the entire skyline drive and it has just really incredible sunrises with awesome awesome colors and mountains and fog and all the goods here's another one of the range view that i was talking about um because it faces south these two pictures they were actually taken a week apart in june one the top one was like i can't I can't read all my notes there because my people are in my way. <laughs> um, but they were, it was at like seven, just seven in the morning. So it was just after sunrise. The bottom one was taken just before sunset, um, uh, like literally a week later. And you can just see kind of what a versatile overview or overlook this one is. Um, but yeah, on this one, you can see that ridge on the right side of each picture. It kind of curves into the left and then back around and down. Like I said, that is actually Skyline Drive. Um, and if you could see where I was pointing with my hand and stuff, I could I can actually now pick out the other overlooks that are further south. I can see them on those mountain ridges now. I know where they are. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in this park and I really, really miss it. <laughs> um, next great sunrise spot is the Little Devil Stairs Overlook at milepost 20. This has an iconic dead tree that has been standing there for a long time. Um, so that is a wonderful lone tree for anyone interested in seeing and getting good lone tree pictures. I can't use these, they're too old. <laughs> um, and then the picture on the left is also the same overlook, but it is the tree that is, it's still alive and it's a little bit to the north of this iconic dead tree. Another good sunrise spot. This one is Thornton Hollow overlook. You're getting a little bit further south now, it takes a little bit longer to get there. Um, You'll notice that as uh, I get further south on my sunrise pictures, they become closer to winter because sunrise is a lot later. <laughs> to get to the really far south overlooks that have sunrises in the summertime, you gotta leave at like three in the morning to get there. So they're mostly winter ones here. Um, this one, like I said, this also has a nice framing tree. And in the picture on the right, you can actually see this was winter. It was actually Christmas Day. And that where how the sun's kind of making a column 
almost that light beam is called an ice column. That's how cold it was. That the sun like reflects off of ice and makes what's called an ice column. So it's pretty unique there. Now this one is my favorite sunrise spot. This is Buck Hollow at milepost 33. Um, and so actually this is one of the pictures from Buck Hollow. You can see the range view overlook. They kind of like look right at each other. Um, but you just have to know what ridges to look at. And I had to study maps a lot to learn where those were. But yeah, this one has some nice little framing elements too. It's my favorite sunrise spot. It's always beautiful, no matter what the season. Kristen? Yes? Since you bring up the maps, I have one of the Park Service maps. Mm -hmm. I seem to remember an overlook that isn't on the map I've got. And it was Little Hogback Mountain. So the and, actual park map? like the, Yeah. yeah. Um, so that one is missed. That map doesn't have all of the overlooks okay. on it. There are yeah. like some of them, they'll have the little dot there, but it won't be labeled. Okay. Um, but if you get like, what is it? I think like the um, National Geographic Trails Illustrated maps or something, or, you know, one of them that's really big and you got to fold it out on your kitchen table or on the floor to look at, <laughs> that has all of them on it. But the actual park map, it doesn't have all of them. Okay. Yeah, there is a little hog back. Um, yeah, that's actually one of my favorite locations. If you park and then walk the trail mm -hmm. a little bit, you come out to this magnificent view. And um, I've, I've done that a number of times. Yep, we certainly walked on that trail some too. Um, we just didn't do it enough for me to become affectionate of it. <laughs> We found our favorite spots and kind of stuck with them, I guess. We tried to explore a lot of everything. Um, I remember being on that trail, but I don't remember anything significant about it off the top of my head. But this Buck Hollow Overlook and then actually the Buck Hollow Trail, that is one of our favorite trails, but it is a hard one. Like we did it in the summer one time i think i was on my hands and knees crying i was so hot <laughs> um but it is it's a i think in the buck hollow trail it has something like one part of it has like 90 some steps so it gets pretty crazy over there i think this looks over um down on rappahannock county on this side um, so Hazel Mountain Overlook is just past Buck Hollow. It's literally like around the turn. Um, the sunrise isn't quite as good just because of the angle of the um, of the overlook. I think like if I go back here, I think this angle is a little bit better. The sun's right right in the middle, and you got all these great trees framing it. Um, on the Hazel Mountain one, you do have all these wonderful trees and it has this huge rock formation in the front of the overlook. Um, but you have to climb up the rocks to see anything. So it's hard to get like the whole formation in a good picture that also includes the landscape behind it. Okay, now we're on to the sunsets. Um, oh, and in each category, I forgot to say, in each category, I'm starting in north and moving south. So if you like start over in a category, it goes back to the north again. I debated on just going north to south and putting things in order that way, but I decided on categories. Um, the Dickey Ridge Visitor Center, and there's a picnic area there too, um, is a really nice sunset spot. Um, it, it has a wonderful golden hour right there. Um, and then there's in front of the visitor center is a, like a little meadow with a bunch of plants and stuff. The golden hour on those flowers isn't really awesome in like the summertime, like midsummer when it's the thistles and the um, milkweed and the butterflies and the bees and everything. And that's really close to the entrance too. So it's a good spot just to go and mess around for a little bit. Um, so then I also put a note here about these other overlooks that are pretty close to that north entrance that have good, really good sunsets. Um, 
but we didn't frequent them because they're usually pretty busy because that's what a lot of people do in the area they're like oh let's go up there up to the mountain for the for sunset so they just hit those ones that are real close to the entrance so we try to get a little bit further into the park just because they got really crowded on a really nice you know spring summer day when everybody wants to be outside um, but the picture all the way on the right here with like the tree and the bench, I think that's one of my favorite pictures that I have. I, I love the purples and the golden hour on that. Um, here, we're back to the hogback. Not the little hogback, the regular hogback has a really good sunset. Um, there is a tree there that can frame the sunset too. Um, just for whatever reason, I think the, I think Several of these were Ryan's that he had done with a telephoto lens, so he didn't have the, the tree in there. Um, also at the Hogback Overlook, just across the street from the Overlook, you can kind of climb up. Um, the AT is just across the street, and you can climb up this little ridge and see down across the Overlook, and that's really nice to do too. And then you have a lot more trees and stuff to frame it. more of the hogback overlook um, at the sunset just kind of different angles and playing around different times of year different angles all those wonderful things another sunset spot is the jewel Ho hollow overlook at milepost 36 um, and actually here for these pictures, it's a little, it's just a short hike. We parked at the Overlook, walk out, um, and the AT is there, and you, you turn south on the AT. I mean, and it's just a little ways. I mean, it can't even be like a quarter of a mile to this big uh, kind of boulder that is a, just a great overlook. Um, this also overlooks the town of Luray. We found this is the we found this is a wonderful spot on the 4th of July. We went for three years in a row, we went on the 4th of July and got our sunset pictures. Then we got all of our firework pictures. And then, so, you know, some oh, of the firework so pictures- that's so cool. There, you better come. <laughs> some you of the firework come. pictures themselves, at well, least these are the ones that I took. So I didn't have a telephoto lens because I don't carry that heavy lens. Uh, um, so I just planned on using the fireworks in something creative like the one below with my nephew. Ryan uses his telephoto lens and can get, you know, like an excellent firework shot. That's like just the firework. I'm not nearly as talented or as patient as he is. <laughs> And this one is probably one of the best sunset spots in the whole park. It's called The Point. It is pretty far south, um, milepost 55. So you're deep in there then. It's even past like big meadows and stuff. Um, but it is just a beautiful golden hour. And it's like the boulders and the trees and everything. So many different ways to frame your shot. Um, and then the one of me in the dress, I found a skull in the woods and we had a photo shoot. <laughs> the day I found the skull in the woods in the backseat of my car was a dead deer skull in a fluffy pink dress. Okay. And I said, who has those two things in their car? We have to have a photo shoot. Oh, buddy. That one. And that one, one like that. Okay, next I'm going to Night Skies. Um, so this one is at the Range View Overlook. It just so happens, so instead of focusing down on the valley, we turned around and it's looking over the ridge because um, down in the valley it is kind of, there's a lot of light pollution. So this is just looking, turn around and you're not using the overlook itself, you're using the ridge, um, but great Milky Way shots there. Mm -hmm. Also, our iconic Lone Tree at Big Devil Stairs. Some great nighttime star photos there too, using that tree for some foreground interest.
And here's the Hazel Mountain Overlook in a way that you can actually use the boulders. You don't need the landscape of the valley below. Um, I think Ryan might have used this picture for um, the light painting that we did, uh, what, two years ago? I just got a notification that my internet connection's unstable. Am I like lagging? Can everybody hear me and everything still? So I can far, hear you. So yeah. We hear you fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it just popped up and said my connection was unstable. So I didn't know if it was making me go in and out or anything. Um, okay, so there's another night sky here at the Hazel Mountain Overlook. Um, okay, I'll go back there. Another not good night sky is in the Big Meadows area. Uh, I didn't put any pictures here because I don't think, I couldn't find any that I knew were specifically from there. So I didn't want to advertise that this is where it's from. And I really didn't know where it was from. Um, but in the Big Meadows area, because it is surrounded by ridges on all sides and trees, there's no light pollution there. So that is a good place for night skies as well. Um, so some weather watching. The wonderful thing about Skyline Drive is you can be driving and it is beautiful and sunny and, you know, five, 10 miles down the road, all of a sudden there's a storm coming in because of all of the uh, gaps and hollows and the way that the clouds move and everything. Then, and then the storm will clear and it's sunny again and then you drive five more miles and it changes again and if you just watch it and kind of watch the clouds and what's happening you can kind of see where you want to go and just kind of take advantage of those great light opportunities and fogs and rainbows um, so we have the picture on the left is early morning just after sunrise that is yeah, just after the Goonie Manor overlook, it's just far, pretty far north around the milepost eight. And it was just like, we looked up and it was like this fog just rolling over the ridge. And I was like, whoa, and everything else is bright. Um, the one on the top right, that's kind of, it's an isolated storm. And I just thought it was really cool how you could see that. And you can kind of almost see a rainbow in that isolated storm. And that's at Hogwallow Flats. That is a pretty good sunrise spot too there at Hog Hogwallow Flats. Um, but just to watch that weather come in there. And then the one on the bottom clearly is a rainbow when we were, you know, just waiting for the storm to pass. And then all of a sudden we got out of the car and turned around and this is amazing rainbow going across the sky. I think I had a panorama of it with the whole thing, um, but I couldn't find it when I was putting this together. Um, some more weather watching. The top picture here is at the Crescent Rock Overlook at mile marker 45. And so, you know, we can see all this storm to the south and then that fog rolling in over on the right to the north. You can see all of that and then got a picture real quick, right? We're like, all right, let's keep going. It's about to rain on us. And then we went just a few miles north and kind of around a turn. And it was like, oh my God, there's that same storm cloud, that same big fog storm cloud on the other side of the mountain. So just a few miles down the road. And it's that the storm clouds on the right of the top picture is the same cloud that's on the left of the bottom picture. But you can see how clear the skies are and how clear everything else is. Um, but obviously those storms from the south were following us and they were gonna catch up to us eventually. Um, but we stayed ahead of them there. Mm. These are just some other kind of weather watching ones. Like I said, just driving and noticing the Nothing light, the noticing the light beams come in. Um, I'm not sure where the left one is from. I think Ryan said it was around like milepost 14 or something. Um, the bottom right one is one that was at the beginning that it, um, I had mentioned just watching the weather. And the top one is at the Hogback Overlook, but it's not the Overlook, it's the other side. Um, and those ferns, they are really awesome um, photo shoot all the time, even without the fog, the ferns with the trees. Like I said, you're at the Overlook, you just turn around 
and there's something amazing behind you too. Mm. Ryan always picked on me and told me the fern bears were going to get me. Um, some more weather watching, just some lightning pictures. Um, mm. We were really lucky, lucky on this one because it was nighttime, so it was dark enough to really see it. And uh, I think this, it, we started at the Hazel Mountain Overlook and like turned around and saw lightning happening. And we kept going just a little bit down to the Buck Hollow to get a better view of it. And tried our luck at some lightning shots. Okay, next category, some short hikes that are gonna lead you to some really nice views and scenery. Um, Sneed Farm, this is um, up close to the Dickey Ridge Visitor Center at milepost five. It's a mile, about a mile and a half out and back to that barn, um, or you can make it a loop and it's three miles. Um, really cool stuff on the Dickey Ridge tra Trail too. There's always lots of wildlife. This one, you know, just kind of the storm and the fog, all those summer storms. Um, I just wanted to show this one because I know a lot of people like to take photographs of barns and there's this wonderful old barn there. Um, there's also an old foundation. There's a cemetery, um, an old root cellar. There's all kinds of cool stuff on this trail. Another good one, this leads you to a nice little waterfall is the Kaiser Run at 19.4. Um, so this one is three miles to the water, three miles out and back to the waterfall, or you can do a seven mile loop with the little double stairs. The little double stairs is a pretty difficult hike. Um, if you want to just do the little double stairs, you can also start outside the park. Um, on the east side of the park is where it would start. Um, we started there before. I think when the park was closed, we found all the outside entrances that we could sneak into. <laughs> um, but just to that little waterfall and back is a pretty easy hike. And the one, so you see in the top picture, it's kind of what it normally looks like. In the bottom middle, that was right after a big storm. Um, so there was a lot of water coming through it and it just looked completely different when it had that much water coming through. And the one on the left is just part of the trail with some fog. There's magic in the fog. And then the one on the right is just, so I was at the bottom of that falls. I just turned around the other way and watched where the stream was going. And I saw the nice mushrooms on the log. So tried my hand at a picture there too. Another good short hike is the Stony Man Mountain. Um, another, this is another good looking over um, Luray area, um, but it's nice and rocky at the top with a really good view. Um, this one, it is 1.4 miles out and back and it is the second tallest peak in the park, but it's not a hard hike because you actually start the hike at the highest point on Skyline Drive. So you're already starting at a high elevation. So it's, it's really not a hard hike at all. And again, just showing some of like the weather coming through, um, my skull photo shoot and different places that we had gone. So if, if I can hike it in a dress, anybody can do it. <laughs> it was also 25 degrees that day in that dress. Oh, so I didn't, really hike it. <laughs> I didn't really hike it in the dress. I had a bunch of clothes on. <laughs> dedication. Um, another short hike. Um, so Dark Hollow Falls is kind of like the iconic waterfall of the park. It's like the most famous one. It's on all the pictures of the magnets and the postcards and everything. And it's really a pretty easy hike to get to the waterfall. Um, it's 1.4 miles out and back to the falls. If you start there at the Dark Hollow Falls trailhead, it does get a little bit steep. There's a, a, an upper viewpoint. You don't have to go down to the bottom. But from that viewpoint down to the bottom, it gets a little steep, but there's um, benches and stuff to rest on. It's a pretty popular hike, so it's not that bad. Um, but you can also take that and 
turn that hike into a four mile loop with the Rose River Trail. And I know four miles sounds like it might be hard, but it's actually really not that hard. It just kind of follows the Rose River and the Rose River has all these cascades that end in little pools. It's just all kinds of little waterfalls and streams and pools. There's an old copper mine. And then that trail kind of skirts around the bottom of Dark Hollow Falls and goes back up um, an old fire road. And the one pictures on the right are the ones there at Rose River. So you got that awesome bridge. Um, I love that picture of the bridge in the fall, but this is the trail and that's kind of the the water stream there too. And that's a trail to get that awesome bridge. All these wonderful hidden landmarks. <laughs> Here's another awesome hidden landmark, the door. <laughs> um, this is off of the AT, but it's at Lewis Springs and it's kind of behind Big Meadows, like the whole Big Meadows complex, not the Big Meadows field, but like the complex where there's cabins and amphitheater and stuff. So you can go behind the amphitheater and the AT comes across there. You get to this great viewpoint, the bottom picture, it's called Black Rock. The bottom picture, oh, in the top right, that one is Black Rock too. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's just about a quarter of a mile to get to that really great viewpoint. And then you can keep following the AT for a while and you can come to this door. It's actually an old mine. It's part of the furnace of an old mine. And I think now it houses some like electrical equipment because you can always hear some humming inside there. But oh. you know, <laughs> it's this awesome <laughs> door that's like built into the built into the hill. And you're just like, I want to go in. I just, but I can't, it's locked. But I want to go in. I'm like, what's in there? <laughs> Um, and then on the bottom left, the black and white picture, that's just in that Big Meadows complex area. There's a little path that kind of goes alongside the road, is benches. It's just a little cute area with all kinds of little nature paths. Um, that was just foggy in the bench. Um, but there's also another way to get to this door that's a lot easier. If you go, if you drive past Big Meadows, you drive south there's just a little pull off at the fire road and it's a little parking area with like five parking spots at the Lewis Springs fire road. And it's probably a, maybe a quarter of a mile down that fire road and you'll come to that door and then across from the door is where the stream starts. And there's actually another hidden door. There's another hidden door in the park too. It is in the Skyland area. Um, it's like behind the Skyland area. It's also where an old mine was. It's not as cool as this door. So I didn't include the picture of it because this one was just awesome. So now we've got to our wonderful Aplectrum Alley. Um, when we started calling it Aplectrum Alley, didn't realize it was this iconic um, straightaway where now, like all the brochures I look at, I know exactly what, what the picture is. It's this iconic straightaway. It's got these giant tulip poplars that are just so creepy and so beautiful. Um, but we call it a plectrum alley because it's the very first place where we found the plectrum orchid. It's also called the putty root orchid. Um, so it's one of our orchids that we found. And it was the first place we found it. And we started calling it a plectrum alley. And it's just stuck with us. Um, but yeah, at the time, like I said, we didn't realize it was this iconic place. And this is another place that I could just spend hours here. It's so versatile. Like here, this is uh, the bottom left is the actual like hiking path that goes up into the tulip poplars and it's at nighttime. So it's nice and creepy. Um, the bottom right is just, just after a rainstorm. And the road is all wet and reflective. And and then the top one is, that's just early spring, right? When the trees are starting to bloom. It's just, it's so versatile. It's so, at nighttime, it's so creepy. Every time we're there at nighttime, I'm so creeped out. <laughs> and then other ways, other ways just to play with the trees. You know, just look up and 
if you go down that hiking trail a little bit, it's almost an overlook, but it's kind of through the trees there. Great sunset. Um, top one is just the stars through the trees. And that's the end. These are just Ooh. some other pictures. The barn, this barn here, I don't know if you, anybody remembers a couple years ago, um, Lynn Husky was talking about this barn and how he had planned on getting the sunset picture of it. And he oh, yeah. did get a great sunset picture of it, but Ryan was like, yeah, I'm gonna one up him and find it at nighttime. <laughs> so uh, it's easy to find this barn during the day, but the barn is down in the valley and you're up on the mountain. And Ryan was just like, I'm gonna find it at night. And then he got really lucky and a car went by. So <laughs> um, that's a nighttime picture of the barn. Um, the top left is us, in, you know, in those tall ferns there that were at Hogback. I told you about the ferns and the fern bears. Um, the top middle one is, again, that's ho Hogwallow Flats just after sunrise. Just a, uh, little fog pools and sunbeams and the right I decided to include a winter snowy picture that's right at the entrance um because I think the park was closed because of the snow um there's a little stream there at the Dickey Ridge Trail that's just outside the entrance um got a little, nice snow picture and that's all I got for you <laughs>